Yes, yes. Welcome to the ancient world of tabletop games. I am Agamemnon from the historical documentary Time Bandits. This is a report from a fugitive. Game boards are all rectangular when folded in half, and consist of tracks around which players move until, exhausted, gamers declare a winner based on the flip of a coin. And that is a board gaming fact. If that were true, I'd have a harder time filming board games. Not an easier time, a harder one. In my experience, the person who knows the game best of all is the one who sits at the top of the table in position to see all the writing on the board upside down. Let the new players navigate across strange new worlds and civilizations with the labels right side up. Go easy on the new recruits. That observation about upside down text applies if the board is set out conventionally and if you are all sitting around a table. Here in the digital world, the cameras are positioned to best capture the action on the board, not always possible from a single camera. There are board games with sideboards to them, and there are board games that go in for the portrait look rather than the landscape one. You'll find boards that hide the fact that they are boards. In coming up with a video on just exactly what a board game is, I decided that video wouldn't fly. Instead, I have to ask what a game board is. Board game is a term made up out of two separate words, unless you are hashtagging the topic on Twitter. Then board game becomes one word to satisfy Twitter's hashtag requirements. For that reason, I use the term board game as one word in these videos. We'll play fast and loose with the definition. A board game is a gaming activity which takes place on a board. But what is a game board? The basic board is a piece of ground, yes, dirt, sand, turf. Use the tools to hand to create your game. Small shell scrapings from the soil forming hollows act as the board. Your playing pieces are pebbles or seeds. And the family of games I'm talking about is the family called Mancala. Games in the Mancala series date back over a thousand years and more. You'll find the basic mechanism incorporated into modern games. Here's Daolong. Though this is a programmable movement game, the usual game mechanism of movement cards isn't employed here. The player chooses a stack of discs and moves that stack around the circle, dropping off a disc each time. That last disc in the sequence determines the action taken, programming the movement of the player's dragon on the main board. Chess is one of the most recognisable board games, and its board appears in many portable formats. Smaller boards are magnetic, avoiding the frustration of playing on a bumpy bus or turbulent flight. At the other end of the scale, if you really love chess enough to splash the cash, there is lawn chess. This is as expensive as it sounds. For video purposes, we'll stick with this standard wooden example. Drafts, chess, and backgammon all feature filled boards at the start of play. The pieces are set in a particular pattern and then play opens. Knots and Crosses features an empty game board at the opening. But to return to the point I made at the start, here's Ludo. Some game boards are rectangular when folded in half and consist of tracks around which players move until the sun sets and the game is done. I've used Ludo as an example as I just fucking refuse to set a Monopoly board down here. In these videos, the closest we might run to Monopoly would be a game of Talisman. It's loud, trashy and funny as fuck if you're in the right mood. We'll see. Talisman's board has text around the outer edges and I'd need to overcome a few camera placement difficulties. Ludo is another game with the main board empty at the start of play. However, nested within the board are these staging areas for the playing pieces. They needn't be included as part of the board. The pieces could just as easily sit to one side and enter play from off the board. Solid boards gave way to folding boards. Basic folding boards gave way to more advanced production designs. This is purely a manufacturing question. How large is the box we're putting the game inside? That large. Okay, make the board fit in there. Any larger and we'll charge our customers more, perhaps too much. 
and we'll be charged more to ship the boxes out into the world. Perhaps too much. Enter the origami board. This will test your cardboard folding skills. A brown belt in origami is required to unfold a four-panel challenge. It takes years of study under an origami guru to attain the level of six-panel student. An alternative to the origami board is the jigsaw puzzle. Here's the red planet Mars, constructed from cardboard. If we flip this over, we'll discover a new world of board gaming. A less complex approach is covered here with the modular boards from clans of Caledonia. Shuffle the card pieces and flip them over for further variety, game upon game. We're a long way from the static desert of Monopoly now. Clans of Caledonia has its own sideboards and additional player boards too. Then there are board games that hardly have boards at all. Istanbul doesn't have a board. Instead, the city is made of tiles that eventually create a board once set up is complete. Your path through the city streets varies with each game. Shuffle the cards. Shut up and deal. Histrio doesn't even need a board. The board's function is easily reproduced using a small deck of numbered cards. Yet here the board sits, just in case you weren't sure about the boardy nature of the game. The mouse mat proves popular as a board stand-in. Daolong does have a card equivalent, however. The board game K2 goes a step further up the mountain in offering a double-sided experience. An extra map with different challenges is almost an expansion in itself. Games with player boards and no main boards, like Gingerbread House, increase replayability with the same double-sided effect as K2. We mustn't overlook paper maps. These offer landscapes over which players fight mighty battles. Lacking hexes or square grids, these scenic maps force gamers into using measuring sticks to record movement. Boards feature tracks for scoring or timekeeping. Olympos has an action selection track based on time spent. As a player, you must decide on the power gained from taking a huge time-consuming action. The player left far behind you on the track goes next and might well opt for many small useful actions before it is your turn again. What are the challenges of filming boards? Until the arrival of this camera rig, the Zen mount, I relied on the overhead rat rig, which has its own specialised mount between camera slider and webcam. A twist or two in the whole assembly swings around into the required setup. That special setup is needed for games with a portrait view. The game is on its side so that it can fit the table. Instead of turning my head and squinting at the layout, I just look round at the monitor just back from the table and the camera shows me what's what. This accounts for some of the bizarre hand movements I'm forced to make as I look at the table without looking at the table. The worst layout is a travel track that allows players to gather on four sides of the game with the text facing out the way to the player on that particular side. It's not so bad on this Ludo game. The animals are arranged to face the players on each side of the table. For a game like Monopoly, shudder. The player nearest the text reads out the effect for the player on the opposite side of the table. Not a problem. Unless you are filming for an international audience, then it's up to the camera to tell a story. No monopoly here for that reason, and for many other perfectly good reasons, too. What are the filming options when dealing with difficult board games? Copy the board, print it out, cut up the copied track, and keep these bits and pieces handy as reference points. Read from those after doing a quick match-up. Fiddly. Go a step further and redesign the game board, copying, printing, and rearranging the devilish map. You'd really have to play the game a lot to go that far. Slap the game on a turntable and revolve the game. Tricky. There was a failed Kickstarter called The Lazy Gamer offering this vital service. Glad I didn't back that one. It was a rectangular platform, large enough to take a copy of the second edition Arkham Horror game board mounted on a sturdy turntable. A gimmick too far, I fear. Nice idea, but you still need that large amount of clearance around the table to make use of the gadget, leaving aside the fact that the project collapsed under the weight of its own gravity. Alternatively, add more cameras, spend longer in editing, or find easier games to film. For you, if you aren't filming, remember that hint about the experienced player. Go easy on the learners. This veteran player sits at the top of the game board and knows the game text inside and out, front to back, right side up, and upside down.